welcome to CyberFocus, your source for international business information. I'm Nick Stern, and I'm here today with Laura Hoover, a student here at the Kelly School of Business who recently returned from a trip to Uganda. Laura, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Nick. It's good to be here. So to start, I, wouldn't, I was hoping you wouldn't mind telling our viewers just an overview of your, of your trip. Sure thing. I traveled to Uganda in December for a um, 10 to 11 day research trip um, for my senior research project for the Honors Capstone here at Kelly. And so in that trip I went and visited a lot of microfinance or uh, nonprofit organizations in the area. I visited four in particular and started to develop a case study about how their experiences were with interns in the past and kind of what the impact has been in the long term for them. I was wondering if you give us a couple of examples of uh, the, some of the types of organizations that you visited. Sure thing. Uh, the first organization I visited was Arude, Organization for Rural Development. It's in Jinja, Uganda. And they provide startup capital for SACO, Saving and Credit Cooperatives, which are like uh, small micro lending organizations. And so they provide the startup capital for these organizations in rural areas and kind of help them develop and become independent and then take what they have and invest it in other organizations around the area to help. Uh, women and families access credit out in the rural areas. Great, so what were some of the challenges you noticed that uh, some of these organizations all had in common? So a major challenge these organizations all face is a lack of resources and a lack of consistent resources, especially looking at internships because some of them are very short term, even those that are longer, eventually the intern will leave and so they need to be able to have the resources and the capacity to carry on the projects they're doing in order for them to to be impactful with these projects the interns are bringing. So that's definitely something they're facing and each organization kind of approaches it differently whether they are leaving it for the community to carry on this project or whether they're dedicating their own staff to it. Now uh, who are these interns? Are they students from America, students from other parts of the world? How are they selected? Sure, so my research focuses on the Foundation for Sustainable Development. And I'm focusing on this because I interned with them in 2011, uh, which was actually sponsored through the Kelly Institute for Social Impact. So that's kind of how I got to this place with FSD where I know them and know about them. And so myself and eight other interns from around the US and around the world actually went to Uganda and were placed with individual organizations. There was one international student at each nonprofit organization around the Jinja area and we would work in different areas of microfinance or health or education and women's rights kind of depending on the interns interests and what the organization does. So these interns are typically college students. Some of them were recent graduates and were in graduate st school um, with a variety of backgrounds but everyone did just kind of just share an interest in sustainable development and having some experience with that. Now, I was hoping if you could explain what exactly you mean when you say sustainable development. Sustainable development is a very vague and widely used term these days and sustainable development is looking at the idea of is there maybe a better way for these organizations to develop? Is there something from my perspective, is there something you know we've learned from all, how all these other countries have developed and come about that these organizations can now take this aid and resources and invest it in their community and get a higher return to improve development, improve their living situation, um, improve their income generating activities. It's it's looking at something rather than um, rather than just giving away aid, kind of along the idea of if you give a man a fish, he can eat for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he can eat for a lifetime. So I know when a lot of people hear sustainability, they immediately think of environmentally sustainable. We're really talking about more the sustainability of their efforts. Mm -hmm. The sustainability of their efforts, of the economy, of their livelihoods, of everything. These people we were working with in Uganda were living off of less than two dollars a day in US dollars and they have several several children um, typically people will have anywhere from four to six children so they're trying to feed and put through school so it's um, 
very important for them to be able to sustain an income. So it, it's definitely sustainability is something that can be spread well beyond environmental concerns. Although that's something that's touched on, of course, in sustainable development. Right, absolutely. So what were the what were the major findings in, in your in your trip for how some of these organizations uh, could make their efforts more sustainable? One of the most interesting or valuable findings that I found, I think, is that there does appear to be a need for these interns. Uh, the organizations really appreciate the level of skill that college students are bringing and they can't afford to hire the professional skill otherwise the interns who are coming are volunteers they're not getting paid for this work they're doing even though it is uh, different than just general volunteer work running programs it is working with the organization and their programs so that was definitely um, a valuable finding I think because it speaks to the organizations wanting to grow, wanting to learn how to be better, um, and seeing that they over time have seen value from having interns and want to have those experiences again. As far as how they're growing in areas of sustainable development, that's where FSD, the Foundation for Sustainable Development, really plays a hand in placing these interns. They teach the interns as they're coming in through an orientation about tools in sustainable development, the ideas of it, different ways for um, measurement and evaluation of sustainable development, specifically, and making sure that the community is involved and uh, invested in the idea as well, so they're understanding and carrying it on. And these organizations, I, the organizations I looked at had, have been involved with FSD for different amounts of time, and you could definitely see that those that were involved for a longer amount of time have uh, welcomed many, many interns and have really accepted how that those programs are working and are kind of taking similar approaches to their other work. So that's really encouraging to see. So you've talked a lot about how uh, important it is to kind of get the, the human capital of these interns uh, associated with these countries in Uganda. What are some of the, the barriers, you think, to these organizations attracting enough interns beyond just the lack of pay? Is it a lack of partnerships with U.S. organizations, a lack of communication? It's There's a lot of barriers, and it's a really crazy thing that you think should be easier, you know, in, in today's world, but um, a lot of these organizations don't even have internet at their work site, so they would have to, you know, go somewhere, figure out how to pay someone to start a website, figure out how to update it, say, hey, we have we have a job opening, or just to make a job posting on any job board. It's very difficult for them and not having a web presence, someone in the US looking, oh, this rural village in Uganda wants me to come work for them. It seems very, it's very strange and disconnected and if you don't have a personal connection, it doesn't seem very legitimate just based on the level these organizations are at. So FSD and a lot of other organizations as well um, identify organizations wanting to accept interns and post them and have a lot of um, recognition among bringing interns through safely and having good experiences. Some other barriers that they're facing is that it's a very foreign culture and you know maybe not, not a lot of students are very interested in the idea and not a lot of students are knowledgeable about the opportunity to go and work abroad and do this kind of thing. And it's very, the organizations are very open to it um, because it's at little cost to them and a very high return if it works out well. There are a lot of challenges for the interns going in though as well because it's working in a different culture. There's a lot of challenges in Uganda with um, corruption and with just kind of having general amenities like sometimes, you know, the, there won't be water or the water will be out for a week or the electricity just turns off those things about working in a developing nation that people aren't used to. So those can be barriers for people even considering the program, or those can be barriers while the intern is there. It might derail them from their work, be very discouraging. Um, so these programs like FSD are really good at encouraging students, making them aware at how this is normal for the people who live there and how to deal with these situations. 
So you've talked a lot about uh, how foreign the culture is and about some of the challenges, but this is your second trip to Uganda. So I'm wondering, what was it about the country that really made you want to return in spite of some of these challenges? It's funny you should say that because by the end of my trip, the first time I worked with the microfinance organization for 11 weeks, I was exhausted, I was frustrated, but I just still loved the organization and the people I worked with. But the work was very challenging because it was slow moving. A major aspect of this is this idea of Africa time. People are leisurely about their time schedules and it makes for a relaxed work environment unless you know that you're leaving the country in 11 weeks and you want to accomplish something in that time frame or even less time. It, it can be very stressful when people are showing up just a few hours late or you make arrangements and they don't happen and just a wide variety of things can happen but even through those experiences um, it was a really good experience because while it was very strange to me I realized that the people I was working with this is the environment they work in every day and they get work done and while there were some places where I definitely thought there were more efficient ways to work personally um, it that kind of perspective really helps me to focus on the work and get the work done and seek help from my colleagues to make sure that or to figure out how, how do you make this happen in two weeks how can I how can I throw together a training program in two weeks and have it actually happen in two weeks and so all of this kind of came together and when when I left it stuck with me because I had been frustrated at points throughout wondering if I would ever get my program together I had training programs and a seminar and they came together in the end so so when I left I, w I was proud of the things I'd left the proud of the things I'd done and just over time I, I kept in touch and was wondering is this really helping them is this something they're continuing is this something they remember did they need that you know I was very new to the idea of sustainable development so kind of having these ideas in my head slowly developed when this opportunity came up to do a research paper I was like this would be a great thing to find out for myself and in general for uh, internships in sustainable development. Now did you notice uh, some of those uh, same challenges you were talking about being spread across the different organizations that that you visited? I did yes it was it was really great to visit these other organizations um, the interns who had worked there I knew um, either while I was there or we got in touch through former interns um, through a little network of interns and so it was great to talk with the organizations and I also interviewed the interns as well after my trip to kind of get their perspective of what it was like to work there and how it's affected them down the line so I saw a lot of similarities in that the interns who do really well in these organizations are interns who are flexible, interns who are adaptive, ask a lot of questions, seek advice, and on top of that really take initiative because like I talked about things can be a little slow moving so those who are taking initiative and really pushing their projects and working to get people on board with them those are the ones who are making an impact, those are the ones who are getting a lot of influence from the community so it's something the community really wants so that's the side of things where things went really well um, the challenges across the board definitely were working with um, it's 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 a different work environment working in Africa time and working with people who um, I mean it, it's kind of a different culture different priorities of what to do in your day different priorities of how to plan events so so uh, things just kind of seem see, some things that may seem obvious maybe non obvious to others and you're trying to communicate that you think you're communicating that a week later you realize it wasn't communicated and and you're standing outside in the rain without a tent for your training session so um, these kinds of things happen across the board but the interns while they were said, said it was challenging they always they really enjoyed the people they worked with they enjoyed the um, conversations they had about this and challenging the organization I think that's something that I noticed a lot is that the org the interns really like to challenge the organization and 
why they were wanting to pursue something one way. Why not try something else? Why are you spending money on this? Couldn't we do this instead? So the ideas um, of the interns who went and had good experiences and enjoyed the work they did, they still had these challenges along the way, but overall they kind of enjoyed it. And it, it was really interesting because we all had different types of projects and durations in Uganda. So it was really interesting to see that we all kind of came out with similar mindsets. Uh, so based on your experiences, both of your experiences, do you feel like a lot of the organizations you interacted with uh, are really able to make a uh, sustainable difference? Or do you feel like these organizations still uh, kind of have a long way to go? I think that these organizations are are doing good for their community. And I think I had a unique experience with that because I was working with FSD organizations. So rather than a random selection of all nonprofits in Uganda, I was working with a group already singled out for being interested in sustainable development. But other than that, um, the one thing that definitely came out of the research is that these interns are coming and they're working, they're working for <clears throat> the interns that are coming, they're working for the organization. They're wanting to benefit the community, but they're working for the organization, working to do something for the organization, make life a little easier at the organization. And then that, in turn, is what should allow the organization to carry out their mission to the full extent, to really help them to eliminate poverty in the community, to provide housing opportunities in the community to allow credit access to rural women. Whatever their mission is, the intern is supposed to help facilitate that and help them to achieve that. A lot of organizations now are diversifying what they do and that can be a tricky thing if they're going to keep working towards their mission or not, but I think that those who are taking on these ideas of sustainable development and are leading themselves away from just straight um, aid and leading themselves away from that aid dependency uh, relationship with the community, those are the ones that are going to help these women selling vegetables from their garden to um, buy more land and increase their sales and put a better roof over their house for their kids. That's, that's the idea is that they can start with something small and it can expand to make someone's life better out there and to help the country from a holistic view, um, help the country to kind of raise itself up. Uh, so, Laura, you've, you've told me previously that you've had some, uh, you had some really amazing experience in Uganda. I was wondering if you would share some of those with our viewers. Sure. Um, every day there seemed to be something new that I could kind of look back and just be amazed that this happened, that I put myself out there to try something new, that I accomplished something, and especially with the second trip to Uganda, I... I went in having all this context about, I lived in Uganda for almost three months, I, I know what this is about, but going in there's definitely something to be said about going to some place you've been before because my eyes were opened all over again and I kind of saw a whole new world as I was developing my own program every day, reaching out to these organizations that I hadn't worked with, that I didn't have strong relationships with. I just would call them and say, hey, do you remember that intern from two years ago? Let's, can I come talk to you? And I, there's one day in particular where I was taking a Matatu, a bus taxi, about 45 minutes outside of Jinja, and I hadn't been to this place before I got on and told the conductor, please let me know when we get to Maga Maga, like, just, just let, give me a heads up, that'd be great, I need to get off there. And I made, so sitting, sitting on the bus, I drew Ugandan fashion, made a lot of friends, everyone's very friendly, hello, how are you, good morning, how is your family, and whatnot, so I, I, made, I made friends along the way, we pull up, they're like, this is Maga Maga, oh great, thanks friends, see you later, and I go in and meet this manager, and we have a great conversation, and um, when I finish asking him all these questions, he turns to me and says, now it's my turn to ask you questions, I was like, oh, okay, great, ask me questions, we had a very engaging conversation about why we think interns come to Uganda, why we think we can make any difference in the world. And it was really great because for a few minutes we weren't 
thousands of miles apart. We were both there in Uganda wanting to wanting to do something to make the world a little bit better. And as I was catching a taxi to get back to town, I was just amazed because this was the most daunting interview of all because it was out of town. It was someone I hadn't met before. It was, it was just very strange. It was not in that context that I knew coming back into Uganda. So I, as I left, I was just really um, proud of myself for having having gone from start to finish, from this idea of this might make an interesting research idea to actually following through, actually getting to Uganda on the ground and asking these questions that just wouldn't have been asked otherwise was a crazy good experience and good feeling that really has motivated a lot of my follow through with the paper. That's great. Mm -hmm. Laura, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Well, that's all for this edition of Cyber Focus. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, please contact us at ciber at indiana.edu.